In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says this. Get ready. Pray without ceasing. I love that. Just straight up. Pray without ceasing. Now, you and I, uh, we're a little confused a lot of times. How is this possible? How do we pray persistently? How do we pray without ceasing? You see, Jesus, as God's member, second member of the Trinity, speaks a word, always pray. That, that's a command. Now, Jesus also, God in the uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit through Paul, is reinforcing the very thing that he opens this parable with, and he says, pray without ceasing. So this is a Christian imperative. This is something we have got to be about. We've got to be a praying people, and we have to pray persistently. He says, pray always, and now, now Paul says again, pray without ceasing. How do we do that? You say, I've got work, bro. I've got to, I've got to get my kids ready for school. I've got to cook. I've got to clean. I've got to hit Instagram up, Facebook, all that. I can't do that with praying hands and closed eyes. I can't do it. Please don't. Okay, don't do it, especially while you're driving, all right? It's not good. There's ice on the roads, people. Come on. Uh, listen, we, how do we pray then without ceasing? How do we pray persistently? What is the Bible saying here? You see, it's helpful when you and I look at the original language that the Bible was written, that this scripture, this passage was written. When it says, but pray without ceasing, always to pray. These are similar verses in their original language, similar words in the Greek in their original language, and, and they carry with them, if you look, they carry with them a connotation, a military connotation. All right, always to pray. Pray without ceasing. Uh, this without ceasing is a phrase that carries a military connotation that means a repeated military assault. So the way that this would happen is uh, a military, um, a, 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 an army would be attacking someone, right? And they would gather, they would go on the assault, they would attack, they would pull back, regroup, rebuild, rest, and then they would repeat. They would attack, they would pull back, regroup, rest, repeat. Right? So that's one connotation. Another connotation is, is one of a, a hacking cough. Now, you and I are no stranger to this. We live in Tennessee, right? The weather changes more than high school relationships, right, you guys? Uh, all right, so, 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 you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? We, you have cold season, hot season, cold season, allergy mecca. That's what this is, okay? Uh, we have snow on the ground. Next week's going to be 60. I'm, I don't know if that's true, but it probably is. Um, you know, so we live in this, and we all probably are no strangers to uh, this hacking cough. And, and, and what the Scripture is saying isn't, it's continual in the sense that we never come up for air, that we just hack our heads off continually until we pass out. It's not that. It's that we, we cough, and then we get some version of the quill. You take it. You get a little bit of, uh, <laughs> amen. Uh, you know, you get some kind of relief. You, you kind of get some rest, and then it comes back. It's persistent. It's repeated. It's, it's continual in the sense that it's, it has this ebb and flow to it. Ebb and flow, but... but but we have to understand that it doesn't just go away for months. It doesn't just, uh, just like prayer, we don't pray if we're repeatedly praying. We're not a praying people that just fit prayer periodically into the, the, the cracks and holes of our life whenever it's most convenient for us. If we're a praying people, it's not the mortar that we just stick in the holes of our lives. If we're, if we're people that are committed and devoted to prayer, prayer becomes the foundation by which the whole home of our spiritual lives are built. 